What's up guys, Anthony Tackett. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the first episode of the filament series. I'm doing this filament series with my buddy Joe Mike Terranella. Joe, if you're not familiar with his channel, I'll put a link in the description. Joe has a great channel full of 3D printing related content. You'll definitely want to check that out. And next week, Joe is going to be doing episode two of this series. If you're not familiar with what this series is, if you haven't seen our announcement videos, Joe has acquired dozens of rolls of filament to review for you guys from different manufacturers. He's just got a bunch of them. So he called me up to help him do this series with them. And what we are doing is we are taking each plastic and we're running it through three tests. One, we're printing a temperature calibration tower to see what that starting temperature might look like for you. The second thing is more of a printer torture test. It's a small model that has some bridging on it, some overhangs, some steep angles, and small details. This will really help you get an idea of what you might need to watch out for with this filament and where you really need to pay attention to your, your slicer settings. The third model is just something to showcase the characteristics of each plastic. PLA, for example, might be something that's a little more sculptural versus a nylon, ABS, PETG that might be something that's a little bit more functional since those are more durable plastics. Just to quickly recap the equipment we're using, Joe and I are both on Prusa style i3 machines with genuine E3D V6 hot ends. We are both printing on PEI and we are both using Simplify 3D as our slicer. Now, a note on Simplify 3D. I had not used it prior to this series. This is something that I got set up with just for this series so that Joe and I could be as close to on par with each other as we can be. I'm still dialing in Simplify 3D. So you'll see some things in these models that are my fault and it's not the fault of the plastic and I will definitely call those out when we see them. I am reviewing toner plastics this week. I have three rolls of toner plastics. One is a PETG. It's a beautiful light blue. I have a PLA and I have an ABS and those two are very similar in color. Just a nice rich blue. So to keep from wasting any more time, let's jump straight into it. This is toner plastics PETG. It's a beautiful blue you can see here. And my very first print was a horrible, horrible uh, temperature calibration tower. And this is not the first print. This is maybe the third or fourth, but I had some issues again with Simplify 3D, this being my first time really using it, this being one of my very first prints using it, and I had to dial in some things. And you'll see as we move through the plastics, once I get the PLA, uh, everything starts to look way better. That's partly my fault, but I can still gather enough data from this to hopefully help you guys start printing with toner plastics, PETG. Toner Plastics on their website, I'll put a link in the description to this, has a spec sheet on all of their plastic and they give you a temperature range for the hot end. This particular plastic ran from 250 to 230 based on the data sheet. So what I did is every 50 layers, I started at 250, I dropped this two degrees at a time and ended up at 232 here and then this would be 230 here at the very end, so that's the full sweep. And you can see things down here at the very bottom are pretty gross looking. Uh, a lot of bubbling and warping and discoloration of the plastic. And you can really start to see a shift on the side here as we move up to, uh, this would be around the 240 range, but colors really start evening out in the 230s and my preferred temperature after printing this a few times is actually 232 degrees C on the hot end. That is giving me the crispest numbers. This little bridge here looks okay and my layer lines here are, are really nice. And then I decided to print this and this is not so good. Uh, I was printing at 50C on the bed, and that will be my recommendation for you right now, is 50 degrees Celsius on the bed, if you have a heated bed. I'm using a layer of glue, and this is just the Elmer's washable, the purple glue 
put a layer of that down on top of the PEI. This stuff sticks great. And that is across the board with all the plastics. They all stuck great to the bed with a little bit of glue stick. So obviously this is horrible, horrible stringing. And I immediately went into the slicer and adjusted my retraction settings. And this is where I ended up. And this looks much, much better. There are still a few things that are my fault and I'll call those out right now. Some of the quality issues you see here and uh, in various small places, little blobs and things like that, that's my fault for not really knowing how to use Simplify 3D yet. But one thing I do want to call out is the bridging capabilities of this plastic. It seems to do just a fantastic job of bridging. The details on this hole in the sidewall are really nice and it handled this overhang pretty well too. Uh, again, any little discrepancies are probably my fault, but all in all, not too bad. So what I chose to print for my third print was this little Dremel tool right here. And again, I'm a, I'm a woodworker, so this was a nice functional piece. Basically, your Dremel goes in here and you put this in a vise, clamp down on it, and then uh, your tool is stationary and you can bring your work to the tool. So that's a nice use of PETG. You can see the flexibility here is really nice. And for these simple prints, uh, it just came out great. Nice clean lines right around that 232 degrees Celsius mark. So again, Toner Plastics PETG, start your print at around 232, and then you can maybe go up a little bit from there depending on your printer. I'm also doing 50C on the bed with glue stick. So the next thing I printed was the Toner Plastics ABS, and let's go ahead and take a look at those models. And like any ABS, there are several things you want to watch out for. Turn your fan off so that you don't cool the part too rapidly. ABS tends to split if it's cooled too rapidly. Uh, it causes warping. There's all sorts of things uh, that ABS is sensitive to as it relates to temperature. Ambient temperature is really important. Definitely recommend an enclosure uh, if you can do that with your printer. I don't have one on mine, so you will see some issues with my ABS prints. So we can get straight to those. The first one is this calibration tower, just like the PETG. This is the temp tower. The ABS range, according to Toner Plastics, is 240 to 220 C. So again, I started at 240 and then incrementally decreased the temperature down to 220 up here. And I found the best quality to be right around 228 C, which is what you see here with the seven. The quality of the number is really nice. I do have some deformity here on the side, but all in all, pretty clean. It bridged that gap pretty well. The side looks really good. Corners are nice and crisp. So I went with 228C on the hot end. So knowing that, I printed this guy. And just to note, I am printing at 80 degrees C on the bed, and I'm using the same uh, Elmer's glue that I was using with the PETG, and I'm also using that on the PLA. It just works really well. I didn't have any curling around the edges here with that glue stick on anything, so that was nice. Again, still learning Simplify 3D, so ignore some of these kind of rookie errors, but because I don't really have a lot of ambient control, the bridging section just fell off. Um, the plastic was just far too liquid and blobby and I lost that. So definitely pay attention to that. If you can control that ambient temperature, please do. Uh, these little details um, were pretty nasty. Again, I think that's largely due to my lack of knowledge with Simplify. It's getting better and I think I might have figured some things out on the PLA, which I'll show you. My third print to really showcase the plastic 
were these little Bowden retaining clips. These go on the Bowden tube connector. So where the Bowden tube pl so where the Bowden tube pushes in, these help remove any play with the tube and can dramatically improve print quality, believe it or not, to take some of that slop out. Um, it gives the plastic a more precise path to follow. So these are a great example of an ABS print, I believe. I have two of these on my printer right now. They were PLA previously. This is a much needed upgrade. Good use of ABS, little functional pieces like this. The last thing I printed, and that was up until this morning or this afternoon even, was the Toner Plastics PLA. So let's dive in and take a look at that. And my first print here was this tower. As you can see, it looks a lot cleaner than some of the other ones. Part of the reason is I'm, I'm getting Simplify dialed in. And if you were to look at the range for that, it's much broader. I believe it's actually 230 down to 190. So I started at 230 down here and incrementally, just like the others, decreased the temp and found the sweet spot for me to be right around 206 degrees C, which is right around here. Again, just really clean lines, nice crisp corners. That seven turned out really nice, really clean along the side here. So that's the temperature that I chose, and it might be a good starting point for you. Uh, 50 degrees C on the bed is where I'm at, again, with this Elmer's glue stick. So my next print was, just like the others, this torture test. So you can see it's much cleaner than the ABS. The bridging actually turned out really nice. So that's a nice characteristic of this plastic. The hole in the sidewall here is okay. Um, again, probably my settings. This little tower came out decent and these steep overhangs were okay. Um, again, pretty nice on the geometric faces. The, any flaw you see in here uh, is more than likely caused by user error on my part with the slicer. My third print was this little guy, a little sculptural model from Thingiverse. He's actually supposed to have a little antenna on top, and that just looked horrible. Uh, again, that I found out that that was a slicer setting. I was printing too slow on this small piece, and things just started to sag and get droopy, and then we're all nasty. So I'm, I'm still learning, messing around, but this is the third attempt. This is what's supposed to be on top. I've got a little bit of a uh, blob or deformity here, but all in all, starting to get it dialed in. But this is a good example of what you can do with this PLA. It's really nice, high quality filament. And my chosen temp again here was 206 degrees C with 50 on the bed. A Little bit of glue stick, uh, won't hurt you. And yeah, so hopefully that helps you get started. Well, that about does it, guys. Today we talked about a pretty big range of plastics, starting with PLA, ABS, and PETG, all from toner plastics. And I'm really happy with the filament. I think you would be too. And hopefully you find this video helpful if you were to pick up a roll for yourself. Just another quick reminder about this series, Joe and I are gonna be hopping back and forth. So episode two of the filament series will be on Joe's channel. You'll definitely want to check that out. Subscribe to his channel. Again, link will be in the description and probably up on the screen for you to click on. If this is your first time to my channel, I want to say thank you for stopping by. If you like this type of content, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more from this filament series, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that red button and you'll stay up to date. You might be able to see behind me, I have a lot of woodworking tools and it's just electronics and all kinds of crazy stuff back there. I also do woodworking, so if you're interested in that, you'll definitely want to subscribe here as well. Again, check out episode two on Joe's channel. That should be releasing in the next week to week and a half, and I guess I will see you guys in episode three. Take care.